All right, this is day 18 of the 90 day challenge. 99 problems, but this ain't one. <laughs> okay, so this lately I've been listening to a gentleman by the name of Frank Kern. But listen to some of his information and trying to get a better understanding of how to market um, a product to the ideal customer. Um, one thing that I, did, I learned today that I want to pass on, I think is kind of a, a good concept, because um, from a from a direct marketing, direct sales and a, a marketing standpoint, I really have an understanding of how to get to know my uh, ideal customer, being that such as this. When I, I have real estate properties, I deal with a lot of Section 8 tenants. So. The beginning of having these Section 8 tenants, I had to learn a lot about the mindset of a Section 8 tenant. Now, I've heard the, the scary stories about having a tenant and when you have a tenant, they're going to they're gonna have to constantly fixing toilets and constantly fixing that and they're just from hell and things of that nature. <clears throat> then you got to find and chase them down for rent. Um, so one of the things that we did was we got Section 8 tenants because we knew that the money would be guaranteed. We get our, our deposits would be made on the first from the government. So that was one good thing. But we also had to realize what type of person was coming into the Section 8 program. And then by figuring out what type of person was coming to the Section 8 program, we had to determine which of these type of people that are going to the Section 8 program that we would like in our properties. Because we weren't trying to we we're trying to always be over at a property that was because of disturbances by our tenants. We weren't trying to be, <clears throat> we weren't trying to be policemen or anything like that. And but we did not want to be the uh, the slumlord, is what they would call them. So what we would do, what we what we learned to do was, all right, what type of person do we really want? The type of person we want to have in our properties, as we found out through time, was a person, of course, that was working a job and working a job that was using section eight as a way to help them with the hurt with the things that they didn't have uh couldn't take care of financially not someone who was just on the system because they found it an easy way to get their bills paid for okay and we also wanted someone who was actually taking care of the house and who was trying to raise a family the right way so of course when we go through the interview process with our tenants these are the type of questions that we, we're going through um so but by getting my only reason why I came to those questions is by actually trying to figure out if I was on Section 8, what would I want? What do I need as a Section 8 tenant if I were one? OK, first off, I definitely want a house that's clean and taken care of. OK, secondly, I want a landlord who actually cares about what I'm doing uh, with my life. Third, I want a landlord who actually is going to go take care of the property and take care of uh, uh, maintenance issues immediately or very, very quickly, not let them rot. Uh, fourth, I want to know that I'm in a, in a place that I feel comfortable and if not necessarily the most uh, uh, the most uh, quiet neighborhood, but at least I have some type of security. Uh, fifth, I want to know that as a Section 8 tenant, I mean, as, as a person on Section 8, that my landlord is not looking down upon me, that that they're looking at me as if, all right, I know you need some trouble, that you're going through some times and they're actually going to work with me if I if I run into some financial troubles. OK, so these are some of the things I th thought of as a as a as looking for my potential tenants. I put myself in a position of a Section 8 tenant to figure out what I was looking for. The same thing goes with this, what um, Frank Kern considers uh, the instant bond method. I'm going to read some of the questions that he goes through, but his process with this is saying that when we are trying to make a sale, we're trying to do things on a, the best sales are usually made on a person to person communication. And so this is the most effective way to uh, to go through a sale process, the sales process in terms of the closing ratio. So what we're trying to do when we're creating our our sales letters, when we're creating our videos for sales or whatever um, form of sales that we're going to use, whether that's going to be banner ads or things of that nature, what you want, what we're trying to design is something that is communicating to one person. A lot of people, a lot of marketers will try to market to a bunch, a group of people. But what we're trying to do is market to one person because we know 
from sales that that face-to-face, -face, person to person communication is the best form of sales. It's gonna be the person who's gonna work to stay with you the longest for the most part because they're getting to know, like, and trust you. You're gonna sit there, sit down across the table from them, uh, knee to knee, uh, face to face, and you're gonna talk. You're gonna ask questions about uh, you know, where the background, you're gonna build rapport, you're gonna tell some stories about yourself. Then you go kid, then you just through your interaction, you start gearing your your sales presentation towards the information that you get from your prospect. Now, being that we're working with internet marketing, which is this more geared towards, we can't necessarily gear everything towards that uh, each individual person, but we're going to speak our, and our language and our writing is gonna be geared towards that one individual person. So who is that one individual person? That is the question that we're trying to answer with this instant, the instant bond method. So with the instant bond method, what we're going to do is this. We're going to ask our questions, who is that ideal customer that encompasses a lot of the, our, the person that we're going to need what we're offering? Okay. So we're going to ask questions such as this. What is their gender? What is their age? Are they married? And what is their, what is the spouse like? Um, what does the spouse think of all the things that are going on with this, this sale that they're trying to make, okay? That they're trying to purchase, they're trying to make, excuse me. Uh, do they have kids? And what's the relationship with this ideal person uh, with their children? Okay, what is this person wearing? What do they do for a living? Uh, what is the person, here's a very key one, what is, their, what is their person's biggest frustration, okay? What is their biggest, as he would call it, their surface desire, meaning like, what he says about the service desire is that we have, he goes into this whole thing about two different, two types of people, uh, two, two different shells of people. The surface one is like saying they have the big cars or the fancy cars, the big houses and things like that. That's on the outside. But in the end, is written inside, what are those really, those big cars, uh, the fancy cars and the big houses, what they do, what kind of uh, desire do they fulfill by having those things on the inside, okay? Um when it comes down to dating and things, it was something I learned from when I was learning about dating. Here's an example that when a woman says to me that, you know, they like somebody who uh, makes them feel secure. Or no, 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 no. what they say, what they say, what it is, is what, what is it? Why I like a big, strong man. And it's like, well, why do you want a big, strong man? That would be the question to ask a woman. Now, what they would basically say is something, something along the lines of it makes me feel secure. So my at this point, now I can cater my conversation to showing that I'm a secure person. Uh, I, I can give them security because of this and that and the other. They can show them that security, okay? So the same thing happens with this with this situation with our prospect for our sales. They're saying that he wants this big fancy car. So of course, we're going to show them, we're going to tell them, maybe hook them with the, um, the big line of being able to get this fancy car or this big, or the big house, right? But then when they step into, once they've clicked on our banner ad, once they've clicked on our advertising, they started looking at our sales letter, they've opted in to see more information. At that point, we're going to solve what is their big ass problem. As they said, what's their, what's their bet? What is their underlying problem? Okay. What are they trying to solve? What underlying problem are they trying to solve by having this fancy car or this big, this big house? Okay. So we're going to, we can sell people by actually give, showing them how they can get the fancy car through our through our business or whatever any goals they want to have through our business. But in the end, what we really wanna focus on is trying to get down, which puts us in the top percent of all the marketing, no matter all the programs, and why we have to charge more for our programs is by under, being able to understand and solve the problem behind that fancy car or the big house. OK, we got to we have to realize, figure out what it is. We got to show them that we can give them security when they say that they want a big, strong, burly man. OK, and I want to go here and actually say exactly kind of what he said here. I love this quote he said here. It makes it brings everything to perspective for me. And I hope it does the same for you. And I'm going to end with this. <clears throat> he says that every piece of marketing validates their core identity of the prospect and moves them closer to stepping into it. OK, you and we, so what we were doing by added by doing our blogs, uh, by sending the email marketing and constantly giving them valuable content, what we're doing is you move someone closer to their goal. OK, in my marketing, every single step that I move them 
on that timeline to their desired outcome, moving them closer by my giving them some bit of bit, bit, bits of valuable information, valuable content. It helps them solve some little piece of their problem that the because they want to get this fancy car. So here's a little bit of information on how to do a better business deal. Here's a little bit of information on uh, on how to find your the better prospect. Here's a little bit of information on getting the right mindset. Every little piece of information they're getting from our videos and our blog entries is moving them a step closer towards their desired outcome. So every time you move them closer by helping them, their desire to buy my stuff increases as does my credibility. And it goes up exponentially every time. I love that. So I'm going to keep giving you this information. I'm not asking you to buy anything. I just want you to keep watching the videos and hopefully this helps you in the process. This is DR Lando Fortune. That's been today's lesson. Asking you to keep it as simple as A, B, C, one, two, three, and do right now. Hold on, because confidence is all you really need to live your life in style. Hold on, because confidence is all you really need to live your life in style. So just do what you gotta do.